Costube, welcome back to my channel. I just recorded a 30 minute long video, except I didn't record it. I'd already started the video for my end of March update about 12 times and didn't like any of them. So hopefully this is recording, let's make sure. Yep, we're recording. Okay, I am taking a break from packing because tomorrow I leave for a week in Ireland. I'm a little bit over planning and packing. I'm excited about my trip, but I'm ready for the packing slash planning to be done. So I was gonna take a quick break to do my end of the month update as a little break, and then just realized I didn't record everything I just said. So now I'm a little aggravated. Luckily, there is plenty of hot tea and chocolate in the house. So I'm gonna try this again, and then I'm gonna upload it, and I'm gonna finish packing there is also wine in the house, but I'm not sure if I want to introduce wine into this process. Okay, so if I haven't said already, this is the first trip my sister and I are taking as adults together. We traveled together when we were kids. Our dad would take us for a week to Lake Erie, which was about an hour from where we lived. Um, we would rent a cottage on Lake Erie. My sister used to always get homesick, and so usually by the second or third day she was sick, and my dad had to drive her back to my mom. Uh, my parents are divorced and we stayed with our mom. Um, anyways, so we have been on vacation together but never as adults. And I am the oldest and I am a typical older bossy sister. Um, but my sister is also quite independent and she has been doing much of the planning and much of the bossing. For example, she will text me and say, buy these waterproof pants, they're on sale. Call your air uh, cell phone carrier and get an international plan. Call the airline and upgrade your seats if you want to, which all of those things are very helpful. I'm just not used to someone being the older sister. So we have separate rental cars. Our boys are driving. I am not gonna be trying to drive on the opposite side of the road. I'm gonna be working on my accent. Um, so I think having the separate cars will be good, um, but I am super excited to spend a week with her and her husband. And Brian. Um, the kitties are at work. I am boarding them at the clinic because we have a boarding facility and the babies are wild enough that I fear they will burn my house down or mama will kill them because she's gotten really spunky the last week or two when I've opened the windows, let some fresh air in. Uh, oh, I have a cute picture. I will try to upload it here. Um, I opened the window and all the babies were sitting in it. Mm, it was adorable. Um, but anyways, I think the fresh air is like making her have, you know, like cage craze or something because she'll just rush them and she smacks them and bites them and hisses at them and growls at them. So um, I don't want to leave them all here without somebody watching them all the time. So anyways, there's no babies here. I'm in the process of packing. This is my end of March update. Let's get going. Um, okay, let's do purchases because I have some purchases. It is fair to say that I don't even know why I bother doing Stitch from Stash because the year starts and two or three weeks into the year I go to Stitch Away and buy stuff and then market happens in March and I buy stuff even though I know I don't need to. It's gonna, you know, I don't buy like the market exclusives. I buy the stuff that's patterns I can get at any time, but whatever. Technically I didn't buy this stuff because I still had a gift certificate from my mom, so it doesn't really count. Um, but these are my market purchases. So I only bought two things for market. I bought Hands-on design, meow, block party, because man, that's cute. Um, the mouse is adorable. Oh, the fish tank, little fish bowl is adorable. I'm so paranoid that this isn't recording. Okay, it's still recording. Okay, so I bought that. I did get the pins, but they haven't come in yet, so I just got the pattern. I also bought, um, this is Summer House Stitch Works Sister Suffragette. This is my other market purchase. So votes for women because next year is the 100 anniversary, 100 year anniversary of um, women's ability to vote in the U.S. And I think it's important. You can also make these little buttons, which I would never wear, but they're really super cute. So I do want to finish it. I just don't know what to do with it. She's got the directions on the back to make the button. Um, so maybe I could somehow make it into like a little, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna make it into, but not only is there the pattern for the US, the UK, and Canada, it's also got Netherlands, France, and Australia. See it? Um, and the year that 
voting for women was enacted. Yeah, so that's cool. That's all I got from Market. Um, when I went to pick up my Market stuff, I also purchased the new Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. Um, there's two cross stitch patterns in here that I like, um, but I also bought it because my LNS Keepsakes is the featured shop. So yeah, um, but there's only two patterns in here, which is fine because this magazine is what nine dollars. So nine dollars for two patterns plus an article about my LNS. Um, I love this punch needle pattern. I think that bunny is super cute, but I don't do punch needle. I don't want to do punch needle. I'm not going to do punch needle. So there's that. Um, the cross stitch patterns that I like, one is from the Primitive Hair, and I don't know how you say it. I think it's Breed Swan. Bleh. Oh my gosh, out of practice. Maybe I should have had the wine. Okay, I think that Swan is handsome. Um, it's Krynik for this gold stuff, but you know, obviously Petite Treasure Braid could be substituted. I don't plan on finishing it in the heart shape, although she does include the heart shape. I think I'm just gonna make it an ornament. I don't know why I think it needs to be a Christmas ornament, but I think it would be pretty on the tree. So it's that one, and then this bunny is creepy. He is creepy. Then the other one is towards the back. Because I've already done this video 80 times. Um, is Welcome Spring by Sub Rosa Designs. What is the problem? I'm not doing it again. That little kitty's cute. I thought about doing him in black and white, um, but when you do a black and white kitty, it makes it hard to do like their black faces and the black whiskers. Um, my kitties have orange eyes. I could do green eyes, I suppose. Um, I might just do the kitty because I don't know how I feel about that fractor thing. I don't really get the fractor nonsense. It's a weird word. I don't really like those flowers, so I don't know. I might just do him with the sign and maybe like half the fence. I don't know. Anyways, and then there is the Fabulous Keepsakes article. Um, there's Barbara who owns the shop and my little 310 kitty that lives there. And I say my because I, on a routine basis, offer to trade all my kitties for 310 and Barbara won't let me have her. Um, I love that cat. She's little. She has a stubby little tail and little stubby legs. It took her a long time to warm up to me, but um, I am convinced that she is in love with me. So those, nope, those are not all my purchases. I also purchased at the beginning of this year. This is Christiane Dahlbeck's winter book. She is a German designer and I love her designs, but it's difficult to find them in the U.S. I got this book from the French Needle, which is an online shop um in the east coast like maybe maryland virginia um she has a few things but not her whole line casa sanina uh the online site in italy has a lot more of her stuff but the shipping's pretty pricey because this book's pretty hefty i've also checked german um ebay but there's not a lot of selection there's usually like you know two or three books or and they're all the same um so i'm just gonna do a quick flip through um of this of this book um, there's not a ton of patterns in here, but I like a lot of the patterns. Um, first are these acorns, um, which are pretty. This one she made into a, I think it looks like a greeting card. I, what is the deal? I cannot get this straight today. Um, another way of using the pattern on a little pillow. These trees are fun. I think they would be cute if you stitched them individually and made them into ornaments. They'd be really cute. They're cute together on the on the um, piece, but they'd be cute individually. She did a card. It looks like another greeting card there. Um, there is an advent calendar. This isn't my picture, but they're little circles, and they each have a snowflake in the back. And you can just tie those on to things. I think that's really, really cute. Cute um, little tags for like gift bags. 
There's some ornaments throughout here. I don't know if you can see these. Yeah, you can't really see those. There's a bird, an ornament. There's a close-up of the ornament. There's some others later on in this book. These are cute little tags. I like this green tree a lot. I don't can't tell if that's petite treasure braid-ish or if it's beads, but it looks like little pine cones on the tree. I love this deer from the cover because you could keep that up all through winter. I really like that. A lot of white stitching, but it's pretty. And they look like they, it looks like they stitched it on either like an oatmeal linen um, or what's the other one you can got, get at like Joann's or Michael's that's not white and not cream. I can't think of it right now. Here is the little deer family. They're really sweet. Um, here's another little deer by himself. Little fawn. He's brand new with all those little spots. He's cute. Um, this little deer is cute. He'd be a cute ornament. Love the winter. I like that little bird in the W. Can you see him? Because I cannot point to it. Ugh. Okay. She's got another ornament. I don't know if she's got the finishing ideas, but this is all in German, so I can't do much about that. This is cool. Um, another little ornament tag. I think I'm almost done here. Oh, this is pretty. This would be pretty on um, like vintage cedar plank or that Weeks Dye Works Aspen that I'm using for my um, Tis the Season. That's it. So these books also come in um, what I'm assuming are spring, summer, autumn. I love that little hedgehog. He's cute and her bunnies are super cute too. Oh man, just thumbs down me now because I can't get it together. Um, okay, that is all I bought, promise. I have some progress on this. I don't hate it now that it has like some detail and a face. I still feel like I'm not making any progress, but I don't hate it. Um, Gerald has a challenge going on to finish a minimum of 100 by 100 piece. It doesn't have to be full coverage, but to finish it by the time he finishes Henry, he thinks he's going to have Henry done sometime in June. So I was like, oh yes, it's only the beginning of March. I can have so much stuff done. I don't know that I got so much stuff done. And then I got super busy at work and a little burned out. Um, so I stopped, but progress is progress. I also worked on my um, Tis the Season because Jen Spoonie Rooney Stitcher gave me some of her cherry cobbler to finish the bird. Look how handsome he is. Because when I went to Keepsakes um, to get some, there was only one skein and it was a totally different dye lot than what I had. There was hardly any modeling. Jen had a bunch of hers because she bought hers at the same time I bought mine. She did hers in Cherry Cobbler as well. So she gave me a skein. Um, so I was able to finish the bird. He kind of looks a little stripey in this. I don't think he looks that stripey in real life. I am going to change that beak. Those are, it's a color I picked on my own, but I think it's too yellow orange. I need um, a red orange. Um, but he's pretty, so I'm glad to have the bird done. Um, I was super excited to have the bird done, and then I was going to get more of this, like, you know, leaves and stuff done. And when I went to Keepsakes, I knew I was missing my colors because... I had everything in my project bag, but all I had was like a little bit of, or no, just the card for the cherry cobbler and then my DMC that I used and then empty for the other colors. And I knew I had the colors somewhere in my house because I worked on this at Stitch Away and then I also worked on it some other time in January. But I could not find the ring with the other colors. And I looked all over and I couldn't find them. So I was just going to wait and look again once I finished, once I got the red from Jen and finished it. So I finished the bird. 
Looked all over in my stitching room that night, couldn't find the colors. The next night after work, I looked all over. I looked in all of my project bags. I looked in my bags that I take to stitch away. I looked in all the containers in my stitching room. No ring of floss. I did it again a third night. I did all of it all over again, which I think is a sign of insanity if you do the same thing expecting different results. Anyways, I looked and looked and looked and couldn't find it. And then I just happened to look up kind of in like this, where else could it be stare? And I looked at the light that sits next to my chair. So when I sit in my stitching room in my chair, I have my magnifying lamp on one side and I have my regular lamp that's more like a spotlight on the other side. And that light where it connects to the base is all magnetic. And so that's where I have put a bunch of my needle minders down that like stem, whatever, lamp. And I had a big one that kind of made a little hook. You see where this is going. So at some point in my stitching this winter, I hung the ring over that needle minder slash hook. And it literally like is, how far away is this? Two feet? It has literally been two feet away from me since January, and I have been looking for it for days. So I was able to get that some of that green stuff done. I'm not taking this with me to Ireland because it's too fiddly. Um, I'm going to need brighter light, and it's a lot of stopping and starting of colors, so I'm not taking that one with me. But I think I'm going to have that one finally done soon. What I am taking with me to Ireland is a new start. Um... I started this because I needed some spring colors, which is kind of funny when you see what I actually stitched. So this little kit, um, Michelle from Mitch Stitch sent to me at Christmas. These are galas. Is that how you say it? Gala? They're a parrot. They're beautiful. Um, they're super smart. They talk. Um, they're really, really pretty. Um, if you've watched my previous video at one time, I said, you know, as much as I like to watch the Cardinals and I like to stitch the Cardinals, birds kind of freak me out in real life, but I really like these ones because they're pretty, but how cute are the cross stitch ones? Oh, this is crafty like a fox.com.au. I'll put it below. Um, it's a kit that Michelle sent to me, but you can get these PDF because she is um, based out of Australia, so the shipping to the U.S. would be pretty expensive for the kit because the kit comes in this bag. It is super cute. It comes with the hoop. It comes with the pattern. It comes with the fabric, and it comes with a needle and floss. So you can just get the PDF if you want. She's got one that's got, I think, koala, one that's got fox, and one with tigers, two tigers that are wearing crowns that are just adorable. Um, so here's the fabric. It's Ada. It's soft though. Um, so yeah, I was super excited for all that bright spring stitching and that's what I stitched. Um, because I figured how easy, or I realized how easy it was to stitch on this. Um, and so I think it'll be good for on the plane. This is the little thread card that she sends. Look how cute that is. See my springy colors, so I'm looking forward to getting to those. Um, but here is her information. CraftyLikeAFox.com Dot au. So that is my one start. Okay, I received a sweet little gift from Carol who won one of my 3,000 subscribers slash two years on floss tube giveaway. Um, she chose to have the keepsakes shopping spree by me. Um, and so she received everything. Um, she enjoyed everything and she made me this little thank you card. I kind of sent her like a season package so she got something for spring summer fall and Christmassy winter um, and then some flosses and things but she made me this is from Foxwood Crossings um, cardinal pattern that came out last year I have it but I haven't stitched any of it um, and you can make these into ornaments or make them into like the little sled ornaments but she mounted them on paper um, and I think they would be really cute for ornaments but I also think they would be good for bookmarks I don't Think that it'll flatten this too much to put it in between a book. I still use paper books. I don't like to read stuff on a Kindle or online or anything. Um, I'm not going to take these to Ireland, although I am taking books because I don't want to lose them. Um, but thank you, Carol, for sending me these. They're much appreciated. My last thing, are we still recording? Yes. My last thing is a quick StitchCon update. Um, we are doing our um, StitchCon spirit wear 
a little differently this year than we did last year. Um, so last year we had a website where you could purchase t-shirts and sweatshirts and jackets and fleece that had the StitchCon logo on it. And we had everything shipped after um, one order to keepsakes and everybody picked their stuff up at registration. This year that's gonna be a bit more hairy because there's 400 people coming this year. So we are gonna do three sales um, everything's going to get shipped to you. If you go to the stitch-con.com website, there is a button that you can click and that will take you to the site. Um, we don't really get to pick what's on there. Um, so, I don't know why I made that face. The stuff is good quality stuff. Under Armour is on there. I think there's some Nike stuff, Glidden. Um, there's some dry fit stuff if you prefer that to cotton. But we don't really get to pick if we have three long sleeve choices and two long sleeve choices. We just kind of get what the um, our local guy has access to. Um, he says it's true to fit. You might want to have some discussion on the um, StitchCon Facebook page um, to see how accurate that is. That is. Um, I'm not on Facebook, so I don't know what's going on over there, but I know you can get information about the um, sale there. Today is Wednesday, March 27th. The first sale ends tomorrow. Sorry. Um, it started a week and a half ago, but I make my updates at the end of the month. There's going to be one in April. There's going to be one in May. I will try to get a video made before both of those so you have the information. But you're probably already watching Pam and Steph at Just Keep Stitching, and they do their videos once a week. So you'll get your updates plenty of time from them. Um, that is all I have. This was a whole lot shorter than whatever I said in the last one. But everything's off my list, so I am going to go pack. Oh, I have tried to find Irish linen in Ireland because one of the cities we're going to is Cashel. I can't find it anywhere. I found an online shop called the Irish Linen Shop. I think they sell, like, tablecloths and napkins and placemats. It it's probably gonna be worth a stop to see if they have any stitching linen, but I don't think so. Um, so when I get back, I'll show you what I got, if anything. Um, but that's all I have for now. Um, have a fabulous spring and I'll see you soon. Bye. Hey guys, I'm back. I forgot something that I said the first time I recorded. Kathleen's Trodden Trail uh, just released a video this week. Um, she is in Nebraska where there has been pretty devastating flooding um, to that state and quite a bit of financial damage. Um, and I feel like damage is not an appropriate word to describe how significant the floods were to a lot of the farmers. Um, there, it sounds like there are millions to billions of losses expected in crops and livestock, uh, which are people's income, as well as their property. That area is not technically in the floodplain, so a lot of people didn't have insurance, so their homes are gone. So Kathleen gave five organizations that um, she is familiar with, um, some that she has already donated to before this happened. If you would like more information, if you would like to donate to um, somebody in Nebraska, and not somebody, but an organization, a lot of the animals that were in um, situations that needed to be rescued, um, she lists those, um, and also the Nebraska Farmers Union because they were um, pretty affected. Um, not only loss of life of animals, but those animals are income. Um, crops are income, and it's what we eat. So head on over. I'll put her channel below. I can't link it because I don't know what I'm doing. I'll try to link it, but don't don't get your hopes up. Um, she said Red Cross and Salvation Army are two that you could donate to as well, but we don't know how much money actually goes to those areas when you donate to big organizations like that. So um, if you haven't heard, go to Kathleen's Trod Cotton Trails site. Um, she's got a video that talks about the flooding, and then this week she released one with some organizations to donate to. Up to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.